Marion throws a dart that lands randomly on a dartboard shaped like an isosceles trapezoid with side lengths 12 inches, 12 inches, 12 inches, and 24 inches. What is the probability that the dart is closer to the 24 inch side than it is to any of the other three sides of the dartboard? Express your answer as a common fraction. Now this is our dartboard. It's an isosceles trapezoid. Trapezoid is symmetric with respect to the a vertical line that goes through the middle of it. So the left side and the right side are mirror images of each other. And the bottom base of the trapezoid is 24. The rest of the other three sides are 12 inches. So now what we need to find is where's that area which is closer to the bottom uh, base than to any of the other three sides. Okay. We're going to deal with the sides separately. First, let's look at the area which is closer to the bottom base than to the top base. Okay, that's probably the easiest thing. So, to do that, we're going to split the whole trapezoid into three parts. We're going to have the middle rectangle and two side triangles. Okay, those triangles are actually congruent because the picture is the you know, left side is a mirror image of the right side. So, if we are within this rectangle, within these blue lines, in this case the point, the points where that lay the same distance from the top and from the bottom are gonna be on the midline. Okay? Midline is the line that goes right in the middle of the trapezoid. Okay? So now the distance from any of these points on the red line is the same going down or going up. Okay? Now things are a little bit more complicated when we deal with these triangles on the side. And the reason for that is if you pick up a point on this red line and draw a vertical line down so and do the same thing to the top. So now the distance or the length of this segment going down is the same as the length of a segment going up. So the distances are the same from the bottom and from the top, right? So now if we are below this red line, we're going to be closer to the bottom base. If we above this red line, we're going to be closer to the top base, okay? Now things more complicated when it comes to the uh, triangles. Because if you here pick up a point on a midline, if you kind of extend this red line to the right, uh, what you find the distance from that yellow point to the bottom base is calculated the same way. We just basically draw a, a line, a vertical line at 90 degrees to the bottom base and calculate the length of this segment we got. But we cannot do the same thing when we're going up because really if you're just going, going to go straight up, well, there's no more base there. The top base is already ended at this point. Okay, So really the best we can do is to connect our yellow point with this corner like this. Um, that's going to be the shortest distance between our point and the top base. But that slanted line is actually longer than the line going down. So really, if you're interested in a point that is the same distance from the bottom and from the top, that point is going to be slightly higher than this yellow point. Okay? And really, what happens if you look at all the points in this triangle, that lay the same distance between same distance from the bottom and from the top bases. They're going to lay on the curves like this, and those curves are actually going to be parabolas. Okay. All right. So let's not worry about what this parabola is and how it's going to look like, but we should know that the curve is kind of complicated, and really also. If I'm interested in the points that are closer to the bottom base than to the top base, 
those are the points below this line below the red curve okay so but besides this guy besides only uh, looking at the top and the bottom bases there are also sides on the sides right so and we also need to be closer to the bottom than to the sides okay now if you look at the side on the right and ask ourselves a question well what where this line where the points lay the same distance from the right side and the bottom base uh, that line is actually a bisector of this angle okay so this angle below between the bottom base and the green line is uh, same measure as the angle from the green line to the black side okay and now we actually well first of all uh, on the left we're gonna have the same picture because it's a symmetric trapezoid but then then we're gonna have uh, kind of two possibilities where this line gonna go so in the trapezoid I draw like this it looks like my green line intersect the red curve at the point that is within this rectangle and that if that's the case all the time that would be good news because in this case I would be interested in the points which are below the red curve and also below the green lines okay but the red curve in this area is just a straight line and everything is fine and we have it just trapezoid okay but if for some reason we find out that in some cases this green line is actually a little bit higher and looks like a blue line here and blue line here now we have a problem and the problem is that we have to deal not just with this flat line in the middle horizontal line but we also have to deal with those parabola pieces here and here and we have to know what's the formula for this parabola is uh, how to calculate area on the parabola and things like that and that is more complicated right so one thing we'll have to do is to actually find where the intersection is is the intersection within this rectangle in the middle or within this triangle okay so and let's try to figure out that <clears throat> the first thing we'll do we'll just put our names for the vertices and different points on the trapezoid and also we'll look at the distances or segment lengths. So we have trapezoid A, B, C, D. We also put uh, E as the point where the blue line intersects the uh, bottom base. And F point is the same thing on the other side. So now we have EF as the same length as BC, it's 12. And uh, since the whole bottom base is a AD is 24, and AE should be equal to FD because of a symmetry, while AE and FD should be 6. Okay. And the left and right triangles, right triangles, they have hypotenuse 12 and one of the leg is six okay now um, what we see we have a triangle that has hypotenuse with it that is twice as one of the legs and such right triangle is a triangle that has angles 30 60 and 90 degrees and uh, the angle of 30 degrees is actually laying opposite of the leg that is half of hypotenuse so this angle B 
or ABE will be 30 degrees. And obviously the other angle A or BAE is 60 degrees. Okay? All right. But also, since this is a right triangle, we know two sides of the right triangle. We can calculate the third side, BE, using Pythagorean theorem. And we get 6 squared of 3. Well, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw our bisector AG and we want to find this point G, which is the point of intersection of bisector and the midline of the triangle. Okay? Now, I'm drawing this midline going through whole uh, trapezoid. Okay? So the G could be here in the rectangle, or it could be outside. G potentially could be here in the triangle. Okay? And as I said before, if G is within the rectangle, in this case, we simply dealing with the trapezoid and everything is hunky-dory. But if G is in the triangle, it means that we have to deal with the parabola going here, okay? And things are more complicated. All right. So let's figure out what's going on. Well, first of all, AG is a bisector of angle BAE, which means that AG splits this angle in two congruent angles. And that means that this bottom angle GAE is half of the angle BAE, and that is 30 degrees. And the angle of triangle AGH is the right triangle, which has angles 30 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees. So again, we have 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. And on this triangle, on this triangle, we know that the opposite leg is half the leg opposite of 30 degree angle is half of the hypotenuse. So the leg opposite of this angle is GH. Well, we know GH. GH is a half of BE. All right. And in this case, hypotenuse AG should be twice GH. Okay. And now from our Pythagorean theorem, we can calculate AH and the H is 9. Well, now remember that AE is 6, AH is 9, which means that G is actually laying inside of the rectangle, and everything is good. Okay? So now the point to be closer to AD than to any of the other three sides of the trapezoid, we have to be within this trapezoid, which we call AGKD. Okay? If we're inside, we're closer to the bottom than to any other sides. If we're outside of this trapezoid, we're closer to some one of the other sides than to the bottom base. Okay? So in this case, the probability that we're closer to the bottom than to any other sides is the ratio of the areas area of the small trapezoid to the area of the large trapezoid okay and all we need to do we need to do is to calculate the area of the small trapezoid and the area of the large trapezoid and divide one by another one all right so area of uh, tra big trapezoid a b c d is half sum of the basis AD and BC times the height, which is B. We know all of it, we know all the sides, we know the height. We can calculate the area. It's 108 times square root of 3. Okay, area of the small trapezoid AGKD is again half sum of the basis times the height. The height is GH, I know. Um, the base AD, I know it's 24. Now I need to calculate the length GK. 
but it's easy. Length GK is the same as length HL. And HL is whole AD minus these two segments, AH and LD. Okay. AD I know is 24. AH I just calculated it's 9. And LD is you know the same as AH because picture is symmetric. And we get GK as 6. So really now I know everything I need to know to calculate this area of the small trapezoid. That area is 45 over square root of 3. And now we just divide one by another one and we get 512. And that's the final answer.